This is just sort of a quick continuation of the video where we're outside burning stuff with certain things. <clears throat> I just wanted a little uh, actual breakdown of what you get here in the uh, Wicked Laser Arctic Spider 3 setup. Um, it's pretty sweet. Uh, see this? This is your new best friend. You don't have the tripod mount, don't even bother. I mean, you can point it up in the sky and be like, wow, this is so cool, look at this laser, but you know what? Seriously, that's all it's going to be. It's going to be a toy. you got to have a tripod mount, unless you're going to build your own, just buy the one from them, because it's good. It's pretty decent quality. It screws onto any regular tripod jack. This is the one it comes with, but... I normally use it on a big setup. I just wanted to show the one they give you. It's got like flexible legs and stuff, so forth. Um, so yes, this, you're going to mount this and you're going to want to take it off all the time, but eventually you're going to realize if you're going to actually use this laser for photography, for actually long range illumination, your hand, it just isn't steady enough. You think it is, but it's not. So use a tripod setup. Um, also, the, uh, the lens caps, all the different optics, uh, if you're going to spend $300 on this laser, get these. If you don't have these, again, it's just a toy. You're just going to be like, wow, look at this. It's a laser. It points up in the sky, and then it's going to sit on your desk. You're not going to do anything. These make this easily 100 times better. Well, not 100. 100% better. Um, some of these are kind of gimmicky. It's like a cross pattern and a line and stuff. But uh, let's be honest. You're buying something that's expensive, that's really just a tube of aluminum machined, and all it does is produce uh, a line of photons that are blue. I mean, it's it's pretty impractical if you really think about it, so you might as well go all the way and just make it as awesome as possible. And these make it so much more awesome. Um, I'm not going to do a video now. Maybe I will do a video where I'll do every single lens individual, and you can see what they do, but things like the star dot lens and the star dot lens, amazing. It's like... like optical hallucination like that level of awesome right there it's crazy it's like you can't even see what's going on it's like you're in another world it's like tron or something burning lens this laser will burn stuff stock but i'll be honest you really need the burning lens with the burning lens you can melt paint right off the scale i mean it's pretty intense i mean still it's a focused like point of light it's not going to be a million degrees and not going to sit like an entire piece of wood like in flames instantaneously, but where it's pointing, like that pinpoint of light focus, it's going to go through pretty much anything, and it's a really good burning laser. Though I, I find just using the stock lens, pointing up into the sky, and then walking down the street and taking photographs with like um, long exposure times, that's like the funnest part. I've gone well in excess of a mile from this thing, set up a 15 second exposure with uh, with like medium ISO settings and you can see the beam. Again, those won't be in this video because it's late at night and I'm not gonna bother with that. But again, maybe with the video where I uh, demonstrate all these in action, I'll actually uh, include those photos so you can see some of the stuff. I have some of them. Um, you, if you look on uh, the Wicked Laser like, homepage on Facebook, I think if you go to the top of like uh, one of the pages, I think it's like Joe or the guy that the, the other guy that represents Wicked Lasers. I think there's some photos in there. I was the one that did the like the silly little um, drawing of the Arctic with the laser, and you'll see the one where it's like pointing up in the sky. And you can see the beam and stuff, but you can get some amazing photographs with this thing. I mean, out of this world, um, very impressive. I've never owned a high powered laser until I got this. Uh, I had a uh, I had a five milliwatt green core wicked laser before that. I thought was impressive. And then I got this. I mean, this is a whole nother level. I'd love to see what the green version of this is. The, even the hundred fifty milliwatt version would be really cool. Um, so yeah, the le the goggles here. I'm doing this one handed because this is on a camera and I cannot put it on a tripod as in a f camera phone. So the goggles are here. I'll just yank those out. Cool goggles. They're so cool you don't even want to take them off. You just stare at the sky and everything's red. It's pretty awesome. Um, it comes with a little holster. I mean, I don't know why you'd be carrying this around in a holster all the time unless this is like your EDC lightsaber, <laughs> so to speak. But if you want to, you can, and it's really high quality. It's strong. I mean, not as if I could break it on the uh, hassock here, but it's got like the cool feature where you can unclip and then on Velcro. So if you need to take it off in a hurry, like uh, you realize people are actually paying attention to the fact that you got a giant laser mounted to your hip, you can just quickly unstrap it and you don't have to remove your entire belt and look like a madman. Um, downsides function and performance while working. Unbelievable, amazing. I even thought I was going to be like annoyed by the safety switch, having to click the modes. Not a big deal. 
Um, you can even access like SOS and strobe and stuff, like other modes. There's like five different modes if you like push the buttons in the correct order. It doesn't say how to do it in the instruction manual, but every once in a while I'll accidentally get into like <laughs> SOS mode. But it's there somewhere. It's not annoying, but if you play around with it long enough, you can get there. But that comes to the point of the only like flaw to this, and it is this tail cap. This thing has driven me out of my mind most of the time. Uh, in the Wicked Lasers Arctic Spider 3, there is there is a spring in the bottom. You can't probably see that. I guess you can, kind of. Um, and I would assume there would be some like level of using different battery lengths, but you really can't. This is a lithium polymer 18650 battery that comes with it. It's unprotected. Um and it's pretty low MAH. I think it was like 900. This is just off the top of my head. I can't remember what it was. But if you really want to use this long term, you probably want to upgrade to a lithium ion cell. And AW makes a 2,900 MAH version and a 3,000 if I can recall. Panasonic makes some really good ones too. You also want to get a protected one so it doesn't short circuit. The problem is those cells, because they have a protection circuit on the side so it doesn't short out, they're a little bit longer, and a little bit longer cells. Again, I can't demonstrate this because I'm doing it one-handed. The tail cap doesn't screw down all the way. It, like, visually, you notice, but it's not that big of a deal. But the functionality of the light, like, gone. It just doesn't work all the time anymore. You, what was reliable, not so much reliable anymore. We're talking, like, a millimeter changes that. Which I don't understand how that's possible. The only way I could grasp that is if the spring inside is always compressed when you use this. So if you use something even a millimeter longer, it just can't compress anymore. And the switch just doesn't make contact. That's not the end of the world. You can kind of cheat with that. I find if you take a little piece of tin foil and you just put it right here, not too much. You don't want to get it on the threads or the on-off won't work. Um, you can normally bridge the contact and it will work, but not always. Second thing, gripe, is this switch. I know you got to have safeties and stuff, but this little key thing here drives me out of my mind. It's really loose. And I notice if I just tap it just a little bit, I lose contact and it turns off and you get to go through the safety mode again. I find it works best if I turn it so that it's like this and see how it's like kind of lit there. It pushes down. You can feel it's tight now and the electricity gets through because it, it has a good contact. But this pretty much by itself just moving around pops back to the default position and turns itself off. So you can cheat and sometimes get good contact if you do that, but it's kind of annoying to have to do it every single time. You'd think if it was just in there it would work. Um, this always works, that the regular switch. The safety switch always works, but the problem is since you've got faulty contact sometimes, being that you're using a high-quality lithium-ion cell or just that your safety uh, key here isn't just tight enough, as soon as you lose a tenth of a second of electricity current to the driver, it's going to turn off, and it defaults, and you get to go through the entire startup sequence again, and the problem is, it's okay if it's on a tripod and it's not moving, it probably won't turn off, but when you're pushing the button, and you're doing the pattern, it's really easy to knock it back out and just get another short, and then it will lose, and you have to start over again. Um, I thought for a long time that my batteries just weren't putting out enough amperage, but because I kept thinking the batteries were low and that's why I was dying, but it's just because there was just not enough of a, a gap. I mean, there's too much of a gap, and the electricity just wasn't getting to the driver, and it kept shorting out. And by shorting out, I mean not actually getting the flow that it needs. Um, so that's my only gripe. If they could fix this, if this was a little bit, okay, a lot more reliable, and it could use, I mean, we're not talking different chemistries, well, we are talking different chemistries. We're not talking different types of batteries. We're not talking primaries. We're not talking using two CR123s. Just lithium ions in different length cells be much better. Um, I did once. I had a few times where I got a 2600 mAh cell in this thing, and it ran for like two hours nonstop. No like reduction of light or anything. I just had the thing up for a photo session, and it was amazing. I was so impressed with it. And then like five seconds later, I tried to turn it back on, and I'm there for 15 minutes trying to get like the contact on again, and it was just not worth my time. Um, actually, in the video, I gripe about this, and I didn't want to just leave it at that. I wanted to have a better breakdown, because I can't just be like, Dude, the switch sucks. The laser sucks. Laser, amazing. Switch tail cap, not the best. Um, so far, everything has worked up on the front. The quality of the rest of the bill, pretty good. Um, I heard that, you know, everyone, everyone's heard the whole, like, nightmare stories about these in the beginning the problems have had and how everything wasn't working that overheat the driver boards and all that stuff um well this example none of those problems this has seen four 
four hours at least, complete runtime. I don't mean like kind of, I mean four hours of constant on burn runtime. And I've had no problems except for the contact on this. And I mean, a contact issue is different than a driver board issue. It's different than overheating. It's different than the optics being wrong. Those are problems that are really a big deal. As long as this is the biggest problem, it's not the end of the world. Um, oh, what else is there to cover? I can't think of anything else. Except, if you really want to set things on fire, Wicked Laser's The Torch burns the crap out of stuff way better than this does. I mean, this is impressive for a laser, but simply put, energy is energy, and however many watts this makes, I think this is like, well, it's 1,000 mAh, so you got, um, you've got got 1,000 mAh, so that's one watt, that's one amp, one amp times 3.7 volts, you got 3.7 watts at least. You've, I mean, there's efficiency and so forth that goes into that. That's maximum. They say these don't really make 1,000, but trust me, you're, you're not going to notice unless you have another 1,000. They're still impressive. Even if it was 650 milliwatts, um, it's going to be amazing. But anyways, what I was saying is, even if this made 4 watts and was 100% efficient, an incandescent bulb in the torch is 100 watts overdriven at 14.4 volts, which is going to net you somewhere in the neighborhood of 120 watts. And now incandescent bulbs aren't 100% efficient, and the reason is because they turn a lot of that energy into heat. Well, guess what? Heat is what sets things on fire. So as far as I'm concerned, it's 120 watts of setting things on fire. So the Wicked Laser Torch is really good at burning stuff. Um, you just got to make sure you take care of your battery, keep it charged, do discharges. You might want to buy a, um, a nice hobby charger. That's what I have. It always keeps the battery ready to go, um, and it keeps the condition life higher. Uh, besides that, um, always good. the batteries they sell at Wicked Laser is... Um, I think they're pretty cheap. I was actually thinking about buying a few for other mods I want to do. I can't remember. I think they were nineteen ninety nine, and that's pretty cheap for what the pack is because I think those are like two-third, uh, not end cells. Maybe they were. I don't know. But it was a pretty good pack. And uh, the bobs, keep a couple of spare bobs. I think they're rated for, again, this is off the top of my head, 2,000 hours, but it's an overdrive hot wire flashlight. So really you're looking at more like... Uh, 40 hours realistically I mean if it was a 2,000 hours you wouldn't be getting 4,100 lumens you'd be getting like 1,200 lumens so that's not that big of a deal all hot wires are going to be that way so I can't complain there and the bulbs aren't that big of a deal you can buy them at like Office Depot if you know where to go or Office Max or Staples or whoever's still in business and didn't die in the uh, crashing economy a few years back but that is pretty much my uh, little kind of well soft couch top review of my Wicked Lasers Arctic um, Spider 3 Blue Laser. Uh, sorry if I was talking really fast there, but this video is already going to be long. I'm probably going to, I just realized this is a 12-minute video. This will be its own upload. I just have to post a link to it. All right, and good night.